Evisar Redstone is launched. Well, kind of. One of its core features, the Radiance Cache is only coming to a future title, Warhammer 40k Darktide. Ray Regeneration, another feature, is currently only in one title, Call of Duty Black Ops 7's multiplayer component. And then that leaves us with Evisar Frame Generation's update. It now uses machine learning on RDNA 4 GPUs and can be applied to a number of games via an in-driver panel update, kind of like how Evisar 4 Super Res launched for many titles at the beginning of last year. For FSR 4 Super Resolution, the Redstone launch did not cover support for that feature on older GPUs, even though we've seen versions of it running on RDNA 2 and 3 through community efforts. So I'd say Redstone's launch is kind of a strange half launch, and unfortunately that strangeness extends to a degree to the newly debuted machine learning upgrade for FrameGen. This was covered extensively well by Hardware Unboxed, and kudos to Tim for getting that video out in such a high quality with such good testing. I want my video today to be seen sort of as a confirmation and clarification of the things you have seen in Tim's video, which I definitely recommend watching. But before I continue with my own testing, I hand this video over briefly to Rich. This video is brought to you by Digital Foundry and Cyber Power PC. Click on the link below to access Christmas savings on a number of Corsair Infinity gaming PCs, starting with the Infinity C5, pairing a Ryzen 5 8400F with a Radeon 9060 XT and 32 gigs of RAM. The Infinity C6 up specs to the Ryzen 7 9800X3D, the fastest CPU for gamers, along with the impressive Radeon RX 9070 XT. The Infinity C7 ramps up the specs still further with the monstrous GeForce RTX 5090 and WD Black SSD, all three offerings ship with a free game. A world-leading PC manufacturer with a 4.7-star Trustpilot rating, CyberPower PC is an official launch partner for PC component brands like Nvidia, AMD and Intel with over 20 years of custom building experience. A five-year warranty is offered on all of its desktops alongside lifetime technical support. Oh, and free UK delivery. But there's more. Enter the CyberPower PC giveaway for a chance to win a Corsair Air 5400 gaming PC, pairing Ryzen 7 9700X with a GeForce RTX 5070 and 32 gigs of DDR5. Get your entries in by December the 19th. Check the video description below for more details. As described by other outlets and by Hardware Unboxed, machine learning frame generation from AMD sees great quality wins versus the previous technique. A great example can be seen here in Cyberpunk 2077. With FSR 3 frame generation on, as we see here, it leverages motion vectors from the game to reproject the images between frames to generate the effect of smooth motion. But it lacks any great information for things like shadows. So if you pay attention to the shadow behind the car in the benchmark sequence here, you can see how it lags behind the car and often has the incorrect perspective. This is is an area where DLSS 3 and 4 frame gen have historically done really well, easily beating out FSR 3 frame gen and producing an image with less artifacts. If we come over and compare FSR 3 to FSR MLFG, as I'll call it from now on, we see a similar quality upgrade. The new MLFG from AMD has a more intelligent and automated way of combining optical flow data from world features like shadows, which lack motion vectors, with those objects that do have motion vectors, like opaque geometry. As a result, we we can see how qualitatively FSR MLFG looks a lot better here, providing a more convincing movement experience. It looks a lot more like a non-generated frame might look. The same applies to other elements which lack motion vectors, such as the particles we see here. In FSR 3, the particles move in a way where the generated frame and the traditional frame lack a clear continuity of movement. They just look like ghosting is occurring, and the actual movement looks low frame rate. FSR MLFG presents the particles in a way that is much more convincingly like the real expected movement that our eye should perceive. It's not 100% maybe and not completely up to the quality there as DLSS 4 FG, but it is good and better than we've seen in the past. The gist regarding this quality update is that you get an experience closer to that what you may find on an RTX GPU now, and phenomenologically in many scenarios, you would actually have trouble telling 
telling the difference between the two, as flashing traditional frames with generated ones is actually very forgiving to any sorts of error. It looks nearly as convincing as DLSS does now, and that wasn't in the case in the past with FSR 3, which was noticeably visually inferior. This is great news, of course, but this machine learning upgrade carries over issues with frame pacing that we have detailed in the past with FSR 3. Now, this was heavily covered and formed a great majority of Hardware Unboxed's video on the subject, so I won't retread the same ground here, but instead I'm just going to be backing up Tim's finding with some frame time data from a variety of sources. The core issue you can find with frame gen on the AMD side, including in this update here, is demonstrated in a worst case scenario quite well. Industria 2. This title supports machine learning frame gen on AMD via the driver upgrade, and it is coupled with the FSR option in the title's options. Curiously, there's no separate toggle here for frame gen and image reconstruction. When you flip on FSR MLFG in the driver and you click it on in the menu, it turns on and it looks like this. Check out the frame time graph of me just spinning here with this camera in the nearly empty room. It's a very simple to render scene. As you can see, the average frame rate is a little over 120 FPS, and what you would expect on the right hand side would be a frame time graph in the bottom right, with most of the frames being around that seven to eight millisecond range. In reality though, they are anything but smooth. The frame times ping pong between various disparate values. Sometimes it has a cycle of four millisecond frames, then it has an eight millisecond second one and then a 16 millisecond one but it does not follow a rule really it has other patterns like a 4 millisecond one followed by a 16 millisecond one 8 millisecond followed by 12 millisecond or then a 4 millisecond followed by something else the point is that it is not a smooth 8 millisecond line or so the jumps in frame time between 8 and 12 aren't exactly ideal for smoothness but the larger jumps between 4 to 12 or 8 to 16 or 4 to 16 are objectively very poor the motion perceived on a VRR display would be the game moving briefly and then standing still for a much longer period of time. A stop and go, stop and go kind of motion that Tim from Hardware Unboxed mentioned directly and showed off with his camera tests. Another thing you may notice is that the frame time readout a number of times shows a frame time within the zero to one millisecond region. That isn't an error of our recording, but those are called runt frames. Frames that are scanned out so briefly that they are only very briefly on screen. On a VRR panel, these are going to be above the max refresh rate of the monitor most likely. These run frames don't show up visually so much so, as rather they just look like a frame tear when they do show up. Tim also mentioned this in his video. Now this example in Industria 2 here is the worst case scenario I could find for frame generation on AMD hardware but it doesn't need to be this way. Compare it to frame generation being off on that same GPU. We can see how the frame time smoothness is otherworldly in comparison, even though the frame time is higher and the average frame rate is lower. This would look objectively much more smooth on a VRR panel. And just so you know, frame gen doesn't do this inherently in this title. DLSS 4FG, as we see here in the 2X mode on an RTX 5080 is a lot smoother. In fact, it's perfectly smooth in comparison with no great frame time variation. That is ideally what we want for FSR frame gen, but it just isn't happening. Now this extreme variation that I show in Andrusia 2 is not the actual given in every title. It can have much better smoothness from time to time. Take Cyberpunk 2077 or Black Myth Wukong. It is generally better in both of these titles. It can have moments there where the frame times between each frame are very similar to one another and look perceptively smooth on a VRR panel, but then it can have these moments where the variation increases kind of rapidly doing a ping pong look like we saw earlier. In such moments, it doesn't look that smooth on a VRR panel. Though I do have to say these results we're seeing here, although shaky, are frankly much better than the unusable results we see in Industria 2. But even then, in both these titles, I would say it's not ideal as the moment to moment changes in gameplay can affect frame pacing to a visible degree. Another title that has noticeably poor frame time variance is God of War Ragnarok. Starting off facing this rock, there is this mini up down variation to the frame times, but that is nothing that would be too easily visible at all on a VRR display to anyone really. Start spinning the camera though in this place and you'll see that the view changes the frame pacing. All of a sudden the game starts inserting these run frames in there where the frames take less than three milliseconds at times and they appear mostly on most displays out there as a very rapid frame tear. It produces a stop go stop go motion that doesn't look good and it wouldn't look smooth on a VRR panel when this happens. You're essentially just not seeing the movement from that run frame. 
as its timing is too short and it's only presenting as a tear. I could go on into other titles, but the core issue I want to impress onto you and hopefully AMD here is that there isn't a guaranteed consistent frame time experience for FSR frame generation between titles and even at different moments in the same title. Its frame pacing is not robust enough to give you the player the assurance that it is worth it to turn on from moment to moment or from title to title. We talked about this inconsistency at FSR3's launch and shortly thereafter, yet it's still here again in a form with this machine learning upgrade. So it's been here for a while, but why are we only now talking about it again? Well, with a new release, it's good to highlight issues so that they can be fixed in the future and maybe that will happen after this coverage. Another reason why it's come up again is due to different outlets presenting different data. Tim wonderfully used the camera to present his data, which I think is probably one of the most foolproof ways to do it. A lot of other outlets don't always go this far. A lot of other outlets look at frame rate graphs and those definitely don't tell the story at all. If you looked at a frame rate graph, as we see in God of War here on the bottom left, it really wouldn't tell you that there's an issue. You'd say FSR frame gen here is running wonderfully. Some other outlets, of course, also look at frame times like we do, but I would say not all frame time measurements are created equally. Take this example of God of War Ragnarok I'm showing again. Here I'm measuring the frame time by one of the surest methods available, FCAT. Excuse the flashing briefly on the screen here on the left. As we see on the left hand side here, this is an FCAT markup. Each and every frame is getting a unique color from a 16 color sequence, which is then parsed after the fact by processing a video feed of the game running. It requires a recording PC and a PC running the game. And FCAT is a near perfect method for measuring frame times as it is only actually measuring the real outputted frame time length that was displayed on a screen. This tool is actually really old and came out during the time of multi GPUs more than a decade ago. Though its usage is cumbersome, requiring multiple PCs and this post-recording measurement. It has a different workflow than most usual benchmarks. Typically, benchmarkers might use something like Presentmon, which you can find online. This tool is ubiquitous throughout the industry and will give you frame time measurements on the PC that is playing the game instead of a separate PC. How frame time values have been measured with this tool have changed over time. Here's that same footage of God of War again, except this time measured in three different ways. On the far left is MS between presents. And this was an industry standard not too long ago. If you looked at that, you would probably say this game has great frame times with FSR frame gen and it has no issues. A more accurate look at frame times can be seen with MS between display change here. And here we start seeing the issues pop up. That frame time graph is a lot spikier and lacks smoothness. And we start seeing those sawtooth forms as well as frame times that are a lot shorter than the rest of them. Three millisecond range ones start popping up here. This is a more accurate way of internally showing run frame behavior that I described. Now on the far right again is FCAT analysis. This is all the same footage, but FCAT is of course measuring the real scanned output of the screen. No internal metrics, but actual real frame time length. And you can see that it's actually different than the other three. It's closer to the one in the middle, MS between display change, but still different. In my opinion, FCAT or any sort of visual measuring of output to generate data is the most accurate. Hence why FCAT is great, or our frame time analysis tools for console are great, or why Tim's work for hardware unboxed using a camera was so excellent. There he was looking at the real output, just zoomed in further, arguably in a way that is more tangible than a frame time graph can be. With that being said, I do not have much more to say about FSR MLFG at the moment. I am very happy its individual generated frame quality has increased to be more up to the industry standards set by its peers, but I do want AMD to improve frame pacing robustness in titles and from title to title. As of now, I would say a user is not assured that they will get a smooth experience when it is turned on, although it really should, given that is the purpose of frame generation. We know that it is possible though to have smooth experiences given how the competition manages it much better at the moment. So that is what we should ask of AMD. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, ring the bell, follow on social media, help us out on Patreon, and as always, this is Alex, bring you farewell and auf Wiedersehen.